it seems to have reached an end. And the Queen of Cups in reverse here, in this situation, is representing you're just emotionally over it. There's no emotional investment left. There is nothing for you to invest, or maybe you just don't want to invest anything emotionally anymore. That's kind of the thing that I'm feeling the most. Not wanting to invest, not wanting to put your emotions, or just not feeling it any longer. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Happy Tuesday. Um, I hope you guys are having somewhat of a good week so far. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> but anyway, this is going to be your general daily energy reading. Yes, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, um, this is a timeless reading, so this could resonate for you at any moment, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this could resonate at any moment. So <clears throat> even if this doesn't resonate for you today, maybe stick a pin in it and save it for later and maybe it'll res uh, resonate for you then. Um, it's a bit of a dreary day and I'm getting a slight bit of a late start here. Wait, let me... Yay, now my head's not cut off. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of a head start, uh, a, a late start. Um, I ended up waking up at like one in the morning and then could not go back to sleep until like around three and of course then I woke up later <laughs> so that's why I'm getting a late start and it's kind of a dreary day today um, normally it's quite sunny but it's pretty cloudy which means that we could get a good amount of rain I'm hoping so because that way I can let mother nature water my garden here my herb garden speaking of which I'm a little perturbed today you guys because as many of you, as many of you know, I've been growing herbs and stuff, and I started growing tomatoes months ago, and it's been, it's definitely been a learning process because I've never grown tomatoes before, um, and uh, yeah, I've never grown tomatoes before, so that's been a learning experience for me. But then I've run into all kinds of roadblocks and hurdles and hiccups and having to start all over and blah, blah, blah. And so I have this one plant that still has tomatoes on it. I had two originally. Um, and there was this one last tomato that had gotten real big and I was letting it ripen on the vine. And it was, it's like, it's almost there, you guys. It's almost there. But then I opened my door today and I look at my garden and my tomato had been eaten. Like there's a big old hole in one of the tomatoes and I'm pretty sure it's from the freaking chickens. <sighs> so I'm a little perturbed about that because it's just been like one thing after another with these tomatoes. I will say though, it has been a really rewarding process because the tomatoes that I've grown, I mean like I love tomatoes, one of my favorite things and like a, a good like bolognese sauce is like my absolute favorite thing. Like I will eat that just about every day of my life, right? So being able to grow tomatoes has been great. Uh, but the, the tomatoes that I have gotten, like I've never had tomatoes like straight off the plant, like right off the vine. I mean, obviously you can go to a store and like buy tomatoes and like on a vine, but like that's different because it was cut from the plant and it went through processing and it took a while before it actually gets to you, right? This right here, a fresh tomato right off the plant itself, like let it ripen on, vine ripen on that thing. Ooh, honey, let me tell you, I was so excited for that freaking tomato. And so, which is fine because I have another one which is really small. And I was trying to think, I was, I was trying to think about what I wanted to do. Maybe I would use one of them like for seeds and like start a new plant from it. So obviously the chickens or whomever took a bite out of my tomato, they've decided that for me. <laughs> anyway. So there's your little bit of story time today, right? I don't, I don't really have anything else to go on. So let's get into this here. Um, using the same decks, I'm working with the Tarot Mucha right now. And then getting clarity, most likely that's going to come from the Los Carabello deck. Yes? <sighs> All right, y'all. Let's get into this here and see what we've got for today. Yeah? Here we go. Hi. <laughs> 
Spirit. <laughs> Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representations of the energies in, w of, in which, in terms of the energies in which, oh, Lord. Pull it together, Eric. Whew. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies of the situations, circumstances, places, and situationships in which we all need it the very, very most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, y'all. Five shuffles here. Here we go. One. Two. Four. Morning coffee. Daily energy reading. This is three. Oh, oops. Hold on a second. Let me finish shuffling and then I have to... This is four. Or oh, wait. Yeah, this is four. And this is five. Okay. So hold right there for a second. I have to... There, I have... Okay, wait. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, jeez. Destroy. Oh. Well, I didn't realize my computer was asleep. <laughs> I have, I have these um, these these lights that they're like a they're like a blue light um, and it ha it like attracts bugs and stuff and I use it to try and battle the mosquitoes, um, and I leave it on leave it running like overnight or at least like when it's dark or when I'm not home because that helps to like attract them because there's less for them to be distracted by so they are more likely to go to the blue light um, but the, the the lamp itself has a fan in it which makes a good amount of noise and even now I'm sure you guys can hear the difference I forgot to turn it off before I started recording and and I bumped into my desk here didn't realize my computer was on sleep I thought I turned it off Yikes. Okay, anyway, let's get into this here, yeah? All right, so what do we have for today? What do we want to talk about, kids? What do we want to talk about? Okay, well, first card out, only card out so far, is the Queen of Cups, but the Queen of Cups is in reverse. Um, and then you have the Ten of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck here. So it, it really seems like, um, well, first of all, what I want to say is the Queen of Cups in reverse isn't necessarily a good thing. Um, she, the Queen of Cups represents emotional stability and emotional awareness. Um, she can also represent emotional boundaries when, and these are all things that she represents when she's uh, uh, well aspected, when she's upright, when she's balanced. With the Queen of Cups in reverse, it can represent um, emotional volatility, um, depression, lack of boundaries. Um, but in this case, I don't feel like it's really anything that bad. And especially with this Ten of Pentacles here at the bottom of the deck, um, to me, this kind of feels like something has come to a completion. Uh, there's something that's run its course. There's something that you have been maybe pursuing, persevering towards, working hard towards, putting a lot of time and energy into, or maybe just a lot of time into. Um, but it seems to <clears throat> it seems to have reached an end, and the Queen of Cups in reverse here in this case situation is representing or is help making me feel like you're just emotionally over it. 
there's no emotional investment left. There is nothing for you to invest or maybe you just don't want to invest anything emotionally anymore. That's kind of the thing that I'm feeling the most. Not wanting to invest, not wanting to put your emotions or just not feeling it any longer. Okay. Potentially, I'm hearing things like maybe even wanting to get out. Um, uh, this also, this situation could also be very emotionally taxing for you, emotionally draining. Um, it feels like either it feels like you have nothing left to give or you just don't want to give any longer. Now, see, here's where this, the Queen of Cups in, in reverse can be dangerous because we all know how, how strong our emotions can be and we all know how being in a strong emotional state can lead to some less than favorable outcomes a lot of the time, right? Like we can, we can react to things in certain ways or we can approach things in certain ways that really just end up being worse than we had, it had worse than it needed to be um, just because of our emotions. And so I'm feeling like you may be justified in not wanting to have to invest anything emotionally anymore or just not feeling it anymore, it, but be careful with allowing your emotions to run amok because emotional volatility can also be represented by this Queen of Cups here in reverse, yeah? But let's just go a little further. Um, let's get a little bit more of the story. So what else do, can we say about this Queen of Cups in reverse, please? Spirit? this one okay okay yeah there's something there's definitely a transformation happening and it feels like right now um this feels like the very to be honest this feels like the very start of this transformation for you um because well what you have here the, the other card that's come out is death and um that's the only thing that's come out so far but it feels like this is the the, the beginnings of this transformation for you this feels like this is that moment where you start to realize that you're not invested in this any longer or you don't want to be invested in this any longer and so now you have the opportunity to put your emotions or put your your energy your effort your drive elsewhere okay so this is the start of it yeah and, and then at the bottom of the deck you do have the seven of cups now um, so the Seven of Cups is kind of, your vision may be clouded a little bit in this situation. Sorry, my phone is freaking out. <laughs> your vision may be clouded in this situation, um, because your emotions may be a little bit out of whack because you're not really feeling this, but I don't really think, I don't want to say that you're not seeing this clearly um the seven of cups here is actually giving me a feeling of like there are so many different things that have built up in this situation for you to just be like i just don't want to do this any longer like this is not <laughs> this is not what i signed up for all right uh let's keep going Okay, we circle back around to the Ten of Pentacles, all right? And um, what's come out, I'm sorry, you guys. I, this phone has been subjected to some elements that have not been the nicest to it. So now it's, I thought it was fine at one point, but it doesn't seem to be fine right now. So, but that's okay, we're, we're doing this, so it's fine. <laughs> Don't mind me. I digress. What you have now. Ooh. Okay. So what you have now at this point is it feels like you may be stuck here. But you have the devil. And that's come out with three other cards. But we'll talk about those in a second. The devil is what I definitely want to get some deeper clarity on uh, in terms of this situation. Um, because this seems to be... The devil feels like that binding agent right now. So look, we're back, we're circling back to the 10 of pentacles at the bottom of the deck, right? So to me, this is saying that something has run its course and yet something here 
something about this situation seems to be holding you down. Seems to, seems to be uh, um, promoting or producing feelings of being stuck, of being chained to something. Okay, this could be a toxic situation, but that's not really what I'm feeling the most. What I'm feeling the most is the, the chains, the binding in, involved in this situation, or at least the feelings of being bound here, all right? You do have a choice to make. You do have the two of wands here. So now you're at a point where it's like, okay, I've got to decide what I'm going to do. Am I going to stay or am I going to go somewhere else? With that, you have the two of cups, and then you have the wheel of fortune. Now, There could be something influencing you in terms of love and relationships here because of this two of cups. Maybe you're in a situation right now where you're like with a soulmate or you're with a partner and um, things may have been good in the beginning, but now it seems like there's some sort of cycle. The Wheel of Fortune is giving me an energy, in some cases, in this narrative at least, it's giving me an energy of you're in a relationship with someone that is cycling through the same old same old every day like i'm the, the wheel of fortune is just giving me that energy of some going through something over and over and over again and it's never really changing it's not going to change quite frankly and that's why i feel like if that if this part of the reading is resonating for you that's why i feel like this queen of cups in reverse is you being just no longer wanting to be emotionally invested your emotions are just not in it any longer now from a different point of view and this point of view could also resonate for you as well. This Two of Cups also repre represents that bond within yourself, that bond that you have with yourself. And it seems or it feels like part of what, part of the good thing about this, a part of the good thing about the Queen of Cups being in reverse and you not being emotionally invested any longer or not wanting to be emotionally invested any longer is that there is a sense of self-love, maybe even pride. I'm also hearing things like joy but having a connection with yourself because this two of cups can also represent that bond within you right that soul that what i guess you could call a soulmate relationship with yourself having a deep it really does feel like you have a deep bond with yourself you've been able to integrate this and balance this masculine and feminine energy within you you've been able to reconcile and heal a lot of the damages and the um the pain from the past and all that stuff but it's creating a situation in which you are now interesting. You are now facing starting a new cycle for yourself. That's interesting. I didn't get that at first. It just came through. And because of that, now I want to pull one more time to get a little continuation of this part of the story here. All right. So two of wands, two of cups, the wheel of fortune. What else can you say to us or to us about that spirit? What is... A little bit more on that. Yeah. Ooh. Hoo, 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 hoo. You know what's so funny? When I started talking about the fact that you are facing the prospect of creating a new cycle for yourself, I did see the fool. But what's come out, I saw the fool in my head, but what's come out here actually is the world, which is very closely related to the fool because the world is the, the last of the major arcana, right? When it comes to the world, it represents the closing of a cycle, the ending of a cycle, the ending of a circumstance, but when it's the world, it's usually a major life cycle, right? Because it's major arcana. Um, but also, the world is closely related to the fool because when you reach the, the element of the world here, something is closing out, a cycle is closing out, and you're being invited to start a new one. So you're not quite there yet. You're not quite at the fool energy because in inviting you to start the new one, you start the cycle over again and you start back at the fool, right? But you're not quite there yet. You have the world with the page of swords. You're still trying to figure something out. At the bottom of the deck, again, we circle back to the seven of cups. Now, underneath the seven of cups at the bottom of the deck is the four of wands and the page of wands. You are absolutely ready to start a new cycle because you have I'll say this at least, you have found or you have um, generated or produced or, or pr built enough of a foundation within yourself to really try and re-identify yourself or not try, to, to identify yourself, re-identify yourself, excuse me, page of wands. The page of wands is 
a messenger. The Page of Wands is a new creative project, new creative inspiration. I also see the Page of Wands as a bit of a re-identifying of yourself in the physical world. I feel like the Page of Wands is very closely related to the Hermit energy, in which the Hermit, you are learning about yourself, you're learning about your inner light and all that stuff. And then you you shine that light. You allow that light to lead you forward. You also potentially allow your own light to naturally lead others without really having to try, right? It's just doing it on its own because you have that connection to your inner light and yourself. The Page of Wands is a very similar energy to that, to that for me because the Page of Wands can represent uh, sizing up your own power, learning more about what it is you're truly capable of, learning more about what it is you're really passionate about, and then expressing that. So often, for me, the Page of Wands can represent, in some cases, it can represent a midlife crisis where you're completely re-identifying yourself later on in life, or just a, a process of re-identification. So, what I'm feeling here, in terms of being able or being in the, pro uh, the, 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 the process or having the opportunity to start a new cycle for yourself, all of the confusion that you may be feeling or all of the different things that have come up that have gotten you to say, I'm over this, I'm done, it's mainly because you do have this connection with yourself, four of wands, two of cups, and you're ready to change the game. You're ready to bring the new you to the surface. I'm, I just heard you're ready to re-identify yourself and go in a new direction. And I'm not saying that you're actually starting that right now because there are energies here, Page of Swords and the world, there are energies of trying to figure something out. And I wanna say trying to figure out how to end the cycle or what's next or what where should you go from here. There may be a bit of a research element happening here. Page of Swords and the world. You may be... In some cases, I'm feeling things like you may be um, researching ways or places that you could move to uh, uh, or just trying to figure out how to close the cycle for you, for yourself, or at least how to move on from here. Okay. All right, let's get into some clarity here. We're going to be using the Los Garabeno deck for that. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Whoop. Let's try that again. Three. Four. And five. Alrighty. So what I want to start with is the devil. I want to talk about this energy here. The devil is connected to the Queen of Cups in reverse and the death card. So there's a transformation that's happening. Your emotions are, are not invested or you don't want to invest emotions any longer. And there is a feeling of feeling chained, stuck, or bound to a situation. Let's talk about that. What is the devil here, please, spirit? Oh, well, would you look at that? Would you look at that? Okay, that's enough. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Four of Swords. So this is meaning one of two things, or maybe it's both. It's either needing to... I just heard stop and smell the roses. Okay, maybe needing to do that. Uh, maybe needing to meditate a little bit. I do feel like the Four of Swords is absolutely some advice for some individuals that are really wrapped up in the negative emotions surrounding this situation to like, yeah, Spirit is literally saying stop and smell the roses. Like, don't focus so much on the negatives. Try and focus more on the positive aspects of the situation or what it is you appreciate about where you are in this moment because that's going to help you uh, tame your emotions a bit, okay? Now, the other thing the Four of Swords is representing is um, having a sense of mental clarity. So you may have gotten into a situation in which, you know, it was really 
emotionally charged at one point. Um, I am feeling for certain individuals here, this may not be for everyone, this may be for like a small group of individuals that are resonating with this reading, um, but it feels like maybe you got into the situation and emotions were high, everything felt great, it was an emotional high, this, that, and the third, but then the emotions wore off and you started to see the truth about the situation because this four of swords is absolutely giving me feeling giving me an energy of having the mental clarity to see the situation for what it truly is okay um what else you have coming out here to explain the devil first card out was the hermit so there is definitely a sense of greater self-awareness that has come through in this situation for yourself right <laughs> The, the hermit is then followed by the world again. So this, I will definitely say that this situation has served a purpose for sure. It has helped you to see some more toxic elements within yourself, or it may have helped you to learn more about toxic situations, toxic relationships that you may be a part of, this, that, and the third. Um, I will say, that you're not as bound or chained to this situation as your ego may believe or as your emotions may want to make you feel like you are right now. Okay. Coupling with these two cards, you do have the Three of Wands and the Knight of Wands. So ultimately, this is a good thing. Okay. Because once where you may have felt chained to the situation, this has helped you to gain a greater insight about yourself and then Ha it feels like it's got you motivated to move on on your path. Even though this may be a toxic situation or even though this may be a situation in which you're just not in it any longer or you don't want to be a part of it any longer, it feels like there's something that has happened in this situation for you that has helped you gain more clarity about yourself, learn more about yourself, and get you it actually, even though this, this may seem weird, but it's help it does feel like it's helped you gain get more in tune with yourself and there's a feeling of activation there's a feeling of wanting to move forward in life there's a feeling of maybe even wanting to explore more try new things put yourself out there a little bit more in some cases very small amount i am feeling some of you are no longer afraid to go after new situations to try new things maybe you tried something new in this situation and it didn't necessarily work out the way you had expected or had planned and Maybe in the past, it's that may have been may have been something that would have, you know, completely defeated you, completely drained you, and made you like basically give up on life or something. But instead, this situation seems to have activated you further. So you're really not as bound to this as you might think, the devil. Okay. All right. Last thing I want to clarify here is the Page of Swords with the world. So moving forward, what is the Page of Swords with the world here, please, Spirit? Well, that's beautiful. I could keep going, but I kind of want to stop right here. At the bottom of the deck is the Queen of Pentacles. Oh, actually, I do want to say, uh, at the bottom of the deck before, with the Four of Swords, underneath that was the Eight of Cups. So there's definitely some sort of energies of moving away from something. I, I just heard moving away from fear. That's a good thing. Now, what you have clarifying the Page of Swords and the world, at the bottom of the deck is the Queen of Pentacles. So to me, this is representing having gained a sense, a, a greater sense of self-worth and understanding uh, of yourself and what it is you want, what it is you bring to the table, what it is you really deserve, what it is you really need out of life. And going after that, underneath the five, underneath the Queen of Pentacles is the Star. Underneath the Star is the Five of Pentacles. But to me, uh, what is coming through here is a, uh, having come out or having healed from a sense of lack mentality, and now being in this this state where of the Queen of Pentacles, where it's like, no, I really do understand or recognize that I deserve better. I deserve more. I have more to the bring to the table. I deserve to be respected. I deserve to be honored for who I am, the way I honor and respect other people, potentially. And so that is giving you the drive and the energy to look out to the stars, look out to the sky and follow wish fulfillment, really go within and really try and understand what it is you truly want and then go after that 
what's come out officially with the Page of Swords and the world is the Chariot, okay? So there's that drive. There's that focus. This is you understand... Uh, even though the Queen of Cups is in reverse here, I do feel like the strongest element of that Queen of Cups in reverse is just not emotionally invested in the situation any longer, okay? So because of that, I mean, it, it, this, this may not seem to make sense, but as I'm feeling through the story, it actually does make sense. So the Queen of Cups can, in reverse, can represent emotional volatility. But here, it does feel like for the most part, your emotions are in check. They're balanced. They're harmonized. I mean, you're feeling, you're feeling and experiencing the truth. What you're feeling is real, and it's driving you forward. The chariot. Okay. I'm being I'm being asked to do one more shuffle on this because when the chariot and the queen of pentacles showed up, I wanted to talk. I didn't want to. I, I was feeling like I wanted to continue shuffling, but I wanted to talk about it from that point. So let's get one last. Shuffle to couple with this chariot energy, please, spirit. Oh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Oh, shoot! <laughs> oh, shoot! Okay, all right. At the bottom of the deck, now you have the sun. That's beautiful. The sun is absolutely representing illumination here. Yes, it's bright, it's optimistic, it's happy, it's fun, it's it feels, um, what is the word I'm looking for? It feels, it feels great, but it also represents illumination. Um, and this illumination is what's really giving rise to this feeling, this really good feeling, okay? This illumination is, is everything that you needed. Okay, so check it out. To confirm that you're not willing to be in this situation anymore that we were talking about that started out being represented by the Ten of Pentacles, something that's come to a close, you do have the Ace of Wands in reverse. And this fell on the pile of Queen of Cups in reverse, Death and the, the Devil and all of the stuff that clarified it, yes, which includes this Hermit and World Energy, all right? So this situation is done. Not to say that it's completely done, so you st I still feel like you gotta find your way out of it or you just gotta transition to the next thing. But yeah, it's done. You don't wanna do it any longer. You don't wanna be a part of it any longer. You don't have the drive, you don't have the feelings, you don't have the, you don't have the inspiration, you're just, you're over it. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, okay? Especially when in terms of this 10 of pentacles energy, which represents having been in something for at least an extended amount of time enough for you to try and put some effort into it and to see how it worked out or to see what comes of that effort. Now, I guess only to find out, yeah, this really isn't what I want anymore. Okay. But what's coupling the chariot here is the 10 of, I'm sorry, the king of pentacles and the 10 of cups. Some of you, some of you are in that queen of pentacles energy and you could be moving on to an individual that would rep, that would, that would, um, um, harmonize with that Queen of Pentacles energy as in the King of Pentacles and you two could really have like something everlastingly beautiful. But what this also could represent, the King of Pentacles, this could be that energy within you that's saying isn't enough is enough or I know my value, I know who I am, I know what I'm worth and I'm gonna go after what truly makes me happy. There's a feeling with this King of Pentacles energy that says you're not gonna tell me that I can't. You're not gonna tell me that I can't go after it. You're not gonna tell me that I'm not capable of it. Quite frankly, this King of Pentacles energy feels very much like a King of Wands energy but it's mainly from that sense of self-confidence that it's coming through. And it's and I feel like it really came through as the King of Pentacles to mirror or or um to mirror or my vocabulary is like way out the window today. Um or to add to that Queen of Pentacles energy because of this, the Two of Cups. Remember I was saying this feels like the bond between the two between your you and yourself, the <laughs> the bond with yourself, right? So I, I, I really feel like that King of Pentacles came out for a very good reason because you may, this may be representing the, the, the physical side of the situation. You're financially well off or you know you can, you can create the finances or generate the finances that you need. Like there's a strong sense of 
being stable in yourself, in your body, in your physicality, that's helping to, get, to give you a sense of confidence and self-assuredness, which is wonderful. Which is, oh shoot, check it out y'all. So look, the sun is at the bottom of the deck. Guess what's underneath the sun? Boop, the fool. There you go. And I guess what this is saying now is the sun is providing the illumination for you to see the open opportunity for you to take a leap of faith. And this just feels like on an emotional level, I don't know, I'm not sure you're taking a leap of faith right now. There may still be some planning aspects that you need to work through, but at least what I'm feeling right now on an emotional level, you're seeing the doorway. You're seeing a pathway, a way forward. Beautiful. All right, kids, let's close this out. Um, I did find the Beyond Lemuria deck, so we're going to go with Oracle Guidance from that today. Five shuttles. One. Oh, whoa. Wait. Yikes. Let's try that again. <laughs> One. Two. Three. Five, five, five. That's the third time I've seen that in this session today. <laughs> Four. And five. All right, y'all. Closing Oracle Guidance. We, we have card number 11, Ether, the Seamless Unspeakable. Okay. Keywords for this card. Zero point field, the void, blank canvas, threshold, anything is possible. Time to choose what you want to bring into your life. Endless possibilities. Limitless. Paradox. The, this illuminated space of no distraction and pure potential is beyond the threshold. It is the silent, meditative moment out of time. The centered and present place beyond the hustle of the mind and outside world. It is where all dreams are birthed, and it is the light we may fear to be darkness when, just for one moment, everything ceases to exist. This is the place between worlds, the womb before we incarnate, and from here, we can choose where we go. The land has been tilled in readiness for the flowers we wish to seed. Outdated, I'm sorry, yeah, outdated doors have been closed, and in, this, in the space between the breaths, we open the new ones. What may be perceived as the endless black nothingness is actually the illuminated eternal, the core that all our fears may be peeled back to. When we step through the darkness, we realize it is only a short distance away from the white void at the center of creation and heaven. Herein lies the feeling that we may have been striving our whole life to meet, and yet simultaneously, subconsciously, running from. In this place of graceful surrender, we may know we are held and allow ourselves the spaciousness to drop deeper into the experience of our existence. Themes here are too elusive and mysterious to define, unknowing without words, the spaces in between, and life force energy. Beautiful. So there you have it, guys. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. <laughs>
Yeah. Take care. Bye. <laughs>